All right, this is the final of our three cues. This is our spooky, kind of creepy feel. And I want to talk in detail about what's going on here because we've got a lot of really interesting things. So in the rhythm, I mentioned this earlier, I have a heartbeat sound. Now the heartbeat I chose because, you know, it literally conveys uh, what's the first thing all of us do when we feel creeped out, our heart starts beating. So I immediately elicit that. Now I got that by using a kick drum, but I'm actually using an EQ here. So let's just listen to the kick drum all by itself. It sounds like a kick drum, but then I used an EQ, what we call a low pass filter, to basically reduce the audibility of any of high range frequencies in the sound. Gives it that dull muted sound of a heartbeat. Now the heartbeat in terms of rhythm, this is based on 4-4 four, four time, all of these cues are using 114 beats per minute as my tempo, but this is based on a 4-4 four, four time signature. Now combining the heartbeat with my other rhythmic element, the tubular bell over here, we get this sound. Let's see, I'm going to wait for the loop to come around. So the bell happens, but the bell does not happen every time a heartbeat happens, you see, and it doesn't even follow a regular consistent pattern. It seems to the listener to be irregular. It's not. What I'm doing here is I'm using polyrhythms. So the bell is being performed in 3-4 time while the heartbeat is being performed in 4-4 four, four time. And by doing this, I wind up with an irregular synchronization, if you will, between the bell and the heartbeat. There is a pattern to it, but the pattern takes too long for people to really recognize. This winds up conveying a spooky, creepy feeling because while it's cohesive, it lacks predictability. And that makes us feel insecure. It, it makes the listener feel that they're in an unstable situation that they can't come to grips with. That's great for conveying spooky, creepy. So that's what's going on in the rhythm. We've got this polyrhythms conveying an unpredictable thing. Now the bell also kind of, you know, for whom the bell tolls has this kind of like graveyard uh, sound to it. Like, you know, this is the bell that rings before all the bodies come out of the graves. It's a spooky feeling using the bells and the heartbeats. So those timbres have been chosen to also convey spooky and creepy. So what's going on in our harmony? That's also very interesting. I'm not using a key here. This is atonal music. The chord progression is an A minor chord, followed by an E flat minor chord, followed by an F sharp minor chord, followed by a G minor chord, followed by a D flat minor chord. And so what's happening there, or a C sharp minor chord, What's happening here is that I'm just using a series of minor chords and they're really disorienting, but they also don't adhere to one key, major or minor. It's atonal. There is no key here. So essentially I'm playing with a nine tone scale and that conveys even more uneasiness, unpredictability. There's no sense of a cadence. There's no cadence in this particular piece. The unrelated minor chords are really effective and the lack of cadence is really effective at again making the listener feel that they're in an unpredictable situation that doesn't adhere to the principles of sanity and security, right? That's what I want because I'm trying to convey spooky, creepy, uneasy. So what's happening in my melody here is very interesting. Let's listen to this. I start by arpeggiating an A minor triad. Then I arpeggiate an A flat major triad. Back to A minor. Back to A flat major. So I'm fluctuating from A to A flat just by what, an interval of what we call a minor second or a half step. And minor seconds are very effective ways to convey uneasiness. Essentially, I'm creating a color tone and chromatic based melody here. There's a lot of chromatics happening, meaning that these are notes that don't match the chord in the harmony, and they don't really match our key. Of course, we're not really in a key here at all anyway. So the use of chromatics and the fact that I'm shifting from A minor to A flat major and there's that fluctuation of a minor second interval between A and A flat as the roots of those relative chords that I'm arpeggiating in my melody here 
All of that helps to convey a sense of uneasiness and tension. Chromatics in your melody are great at conveying tension. And nothing about the harmony or our melody conveys resolution at any point. There's no cadence in this piece. It's never ending. It feels aimless. So who is our character? Well, our character is meandering. You know, we've got this arpeggiating sound that just kind of meanders. The glockenspiel's register is very high, so it also kind of conveys this diminutive, somewhat distant feel. Um, very weak, very frail. And then the situation that this character is in is very eerie. There's no substance here. There's no cadence in the harmony. And the series of minor chords that we're using just kind of go round and round and round. It's a bit aimless, just like our melody. The rhythm that is unpredictable using the 3-4 uh, mixed with 4-4 four, four time, the polyrhythm, all of it adds up to create a situation that's equally unpredictable. So we have this frail and weak character, our melody, wandering around in this very unpredictable context or situation that's being created by our rhythm and harmony. It all adds up to create a great creepy spooky feel. Let's give it one more listen and reflect on all of that. So the harmony is kind of that high end, almost like somebody scratching on glass. The rhythms are all irregular and unpredictable. The melody is very rhythmic and very predictable, but it's also very frail. And because it uses a lot of chromatics, it also winds up being very tense and uneasy. So I hope you've learned a lot from these three examples, the urgent calm and spooky cues that I've prepared here for you. What you want to do is your project for this course is to create one each of these cues. So stick to the same topics, urgent, calm, and spooky. Use the tools that I've given you in these three demonstrations and try to assemble your own piece. Always think about who your character is, who your situation is. Character, that's your theme. Situation, that's your variation. In the next lesson, I'm going to give you a few final thoughts. One thing I want to add before I get there is that you can download these Ableton projects if you want from this course and just load them straight into Ableton. If you're not using Ableton, then I've made the MIDI and audio available. So you can download the harmony, melody, and rhythm for each of these three cues and you can listen to the audio signals if you want to put them into Pro Tools or Cubase or Logic or whatever you use. But I also made the MIDI available for each of the clips here. So in Ableton context, each one of these little uh, units is a clip. I've made the MIDI available too so you can bring that into your DAW or audio software and uh, hook it up to whatever software instruments you want to use. If you have any questions, of course, please reach out to me. I'm totally committed to helping you develop these skills. If any of the music theory in this course has been unclear, like what a five chord is, where I'm getting the notes from these triads, so on and so forth, then make sure you check out my music theory for conveying emotion course. There I cover just the music theory elements. I do refer to these examples, but it's really just the music theory. So you can take that course. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to give you my final thoughts in the next lesson.